Aisha and Buddha Ditya to talk to us about Plutchik project. Uh, hello everyone. Um, I'm Marcel, and um, so this is our project. Um, all right, so I'm Marcel Top. Uh, I'm originally from Belgium, but uh, I'm a student in London uh, doing a master's degree now. And I like my interest lay into like privacy and uh, data sets. So uh, I look at like the data that companies uh, collect about us, um, about our everyday interactions. And this is like uh, parts of the uh, data that I collected from uh, Twitter for a project. And then I visualized um, this data to create these uh, machine generated uh, portraits. So my main focus is on trying to like visualize data in an um, accessible and easily um, understandable way. Um, so now to Buddha. Hello, uh, this is Buddha Ditto Chattopadhyay. I'm a sound and media artist. Uh, I work with multi-channel installation, multi-channel compositions and performances. Uh, if we move to the next slide, then I discuss a few of the projects that I have been working on involving generative systems, AI, machine learning. This is Exile and Other Syndromes, which I developed at uh, Kunst University Graz between 2017 and 18. And it was shown in a Serendipity Art Festival in Goa in 2018. Uh, the next project is 20, which is a, an autonomous installation uh, driven by AI and machine learning, which learns from the environment and moves 100 bells in the installation setting. Currently, I'm working with Blanchard Bot, which is reviving historical figures through data sets available to research um, uh, in collaboration with Volkswagen Foundation. Uh, next, uh, Aisha will tell about her work. Um, hi everyone, this is Aisha and I'm a visual artist, a creative director. I work with the me different interdisciplinary mediums. Uh, I've done digital paintings and this is one of my organization which I've co-founded. The name is Cosmic Tribe. And what we're trying to do is that we're kind of uh, bringing together the space art and the, the cosmic information. So there are two sections, the cosmic lab and the cosmic art. And like you can see, these are some of the work that I've creatively directed. And um, yeah, so basically it's a digital archive uh, where we're using costume design, we're using styling, where we, where, where we are using um, 3D modeling techniques. And also like if you can see the display. And these are some of the other examples where we are trying to bring in the cultural element of Pakistan, uh, where I'm from. Um, and again, so we're bringing in technology, the robots, and these characters are all 3D models. So we're like, we uh, really bringing into uh, bringing this idea of um, virtual production, but also using the manual modes of uh, creation in terms of the costumes, the digital paintings. And some of these works are actually part of the solo exhibition that I've, I'll be part of. Um, this is the second uh, company that I am a founder of and again uh, the Oshi Brown is actually working in collaboration with Cosmic Tribe and what we're trying to do is that um, trying to raise awareness about the culture and rebelling the mainstream fashion trends that are there. So the characters which I design and it's, a, it's an archive that I constantly update. So digital artists can contact me there are a lot of collaboration projects that are upcoming so if you're excited you can even contact me about that and what we're seeking is we are seeking different organizations who could help us with visual data we're building an archive but also different artworks at the same time next um, this is another initiative by Oshi Brownie where we are uh, providing different uh, skills and also uh, different opportunities to digital artists. And we also have a, a currently a team which I'm also heading. Um, and what we're giving to them is uh, different uh, visual mediums and different digital uh, photography works, which there's a studio of like we photograph a lot of uh, materials and then we create digital artworks through machine learning, through artificial intelligence and all uh, new robotic techniques. We have uh, made it into uh, some installations as well. And this is also part of some um, shows that I'm working on next year. 
so uh, the pro for the project blue chick uh, which uh, from which the particular work emerges which is titled senti sentient sentiment right, based on databases that we develop uh, through research for the audio database, uh, I was finding correlations between human emotional derivatives and sound uh, uh, through data mining in the web. And also I, uh, I was researching social media, what kind of sound is generated uh, associated with certain kind of emotional cues. And those were unpacked using some different, different filters and those data were sorted. And then I worked with audiovisual synchronization of, uh, in collaboration with other fellows uh, of, of my team, where I brought those uh, large data set of sound and large data set of uh, images, still images, and animated them to, using the sound itself. So those uh, video uh, data sets generated from this interaction are sent to a code, uh, a code that uh, reads the expressions, human expressions were uh, encountering this artwork and then it provides a certain kind of moment and change that in the and the stuff. So if we move to the next slide, then we can uh, go through some of the videos. Uh, sorry, but Marcel, maybe you can talk about. Yeah. Um, so okay, this is me. Um, so this is like, um, in the, we will send the link and you can also see it on the blog towards the p5.js. Um, so what we did is um, like an, a huge shout out to Ambika as well from this um, like uh, collab for helping us out with it, is that you can press on the button um, show emotion that you see and then it will um, like the AI will try to recognize which emotion you are showing or uh, which emotion is the closest to what you're showing right now. And based on that, it will play a, a video that we created for each of the emotions. And um, so what, what did we do for um, how to recognize these emotions? Um, through uh, data mining. So um, I looked on Google for like certain emotions and which kind of imagery is associated with these emotions. And then I trained um, with uh, the Google um, training that like each uh, emotion would correspond, correspond to a certain image data set. So it's not that it really recognizes maybe exactly which emotion you have on your face right now, but it will compare your uh, webcam footage with like these data sets. And so it, it is to, to show like how emotions are so easily shown or described with emojis with colors, but at the same time, it's so difficult to really put emo an emotion in a certain case and so we want to show like how difficult it is to show this complexity um, right now and how machines still have like difficulties with like reading emotions from a person. So again, like when we were talking about all of these emotions, so we just thought that it would be interesting to design uh, these human bots, which are not completely human or completely robots, but somewhere between. And uh, thinking about the word emotion and how it is it is being displayed online, we just thought that, you know, the way it is being displayed is a very simplified form. And we would like uh, our bots to uh, display it in a more complex sense. So I designed these costumes thinking that, okay, maybe in some way it should be hiding the human element, but also highlighting the human element at the same time, which was in itself a challenge. So I designed some of the props and, um, uh, these were the initial sketches that I was um, kind of having the brainstorming and you know kind of just looking into what kind of costumes I could come up with but the visual concept of the images and the costumes were designed to study a range of visual data sets from icons images memes on Instagram and were utilized to construct electronic props and headsets attire for human bots to represent uh, these particular emotions uh, mechanical electronic parts were graphically layered uh, if you could move to the next slide 
uh, so the graphically layered with uh, these digital fabrics that you see so there are a lot of props and then painted over um, with light so there, there's this technique that I came up with in um, in so the models were created in the ZBrush and then taken for the light painting and that these digital fabrics and then painted over with light to create these radical forms of, of the sentient beings uh, like I've in some places for the faces, uh, human models were used to generate a non-human uh, 3D model in the ZBrush, which was then put together with other elements of the uh, background. And I had to photograph a lot of materials, which I then uh, took into the Photoshop and then put them together. And I have also used um, photographs which documented the um, different emotions, which were uh, some of them were provided by Marcel, like the data sets, the visual data sets that we discussed. And I was also using facial makeup, like you can see uh, in the left corner, like the angry face. So there was facial makeup involved. There were there's a lot of layering that goes into it, and so to kind of create that sci-fi dystopian look. So I was just trying to give it a very um, otherworldly look, but at the same time uh, trying to keep the human um, element alive in that. Um, but I think that this realistic naturalism and a kind of like sign scientism like, that you see in these final images that I uh, designed for these bots went hand in hand like towards the physicality of the image uh, to resonate the more uh, general atmosphere of an emotion expression culture uh, of the current virtual space that uh, we all inhabit and share globally so that was uh, what I was trying to express and again this is like the happy bot the sad bot uh, the surprised and the trust bot. So there are eight total bots that I designed, uh, trying to keep each different, but at the same time sticking to the theme that, you know, uh, it should look uh, overly populated like the information that we have, that we consume. And at the same time, it should look interesting visually as well. And some of the elements could not be recognized by the talking heads. Uh, so we had to, so it was a challenge. We had to like change a lot of things and I had to change a lot of facial jewelry elements that I designed. So the process itself was very interesting for me and uh, I really enjoyed uh, collaborating with um, Buddhaditya and Marcel and I think I learned a lot of things as well because I, uh, I enjoy the way it came out and this is definitely something that I would explore more in and uh, take it to my uh, company what I'm working on so yeah we will share the final product with you. So yeah, this is the um, the videos uh, that we created then at the end. Uh, these are also the videos that will play uh, when it like tries to read the emotion of your face or environment based on the data set. So we will play some snippets of it. So uh, because we created the total length of the video seven minutes, which you can watch completely on the website of um, Be Fantastic. Marcel, we, we need to mention that uh, people need to check the code uh, on the website. Yeah, um, so the, on the website, you'll be able to see the code, um, which you can address it. Um, so.
So uh, please check the codes uh, on the website. Uh, do yeah, you have a please check the uh, please interact with the code and um, check the video completely. And so that was um, our collaboration. Thank and you. Then, thank you.